It was the worst drought that southern Africa had known for over 100 years. It struck both people and wildlife a terrible blow. The drought of the century lasted for nearly two years. This is the story of some of the dramas that followed when the rains eventually came. It usually starts to rain in Etosha National Park, Namibia, towards the end of October and continues on and off until March. For two years, this never happened. Under a relentless sun, new grass withered and water all but disappeared. To appreciate fully what happened when the rains came, it's necessary first to look briefly at that terrible dry period. The only greenery left on the plains was coarse vegetation that the grazing animals wouldn't eat. But even in a severe drought, some creatures, like the lesser bustard or black kohan, are so well adapted that they can survive and even rear families. There are predators who can survive the bad times too. The honey badger or ratel eats almost anything and finds food under the worst conditions. The bustard's nest is just a scrape in the ground. The bird can sit tight or try to distract the rattle. It chooses the second tactic, relying on the egg's camouflage to keep it hidden. The rattel is nosing out lizards, scorpions and dung beetle larvae. No obstacle deters a rattel in search of a meal. The Kohan judges it safe to return to its nest hidden in one of the few green patches the drought has left. The vegetation is only there because it's unpalatable to most animals. Like the bustard, the double-banded Corsa is a bird adapted to living in dry conditions. It doesn't need to wait for the long overdue rains before it starts rearing a family. Even in a drought, there are still insects to catch, and the birds get most of the moisture they need from this source of food. The pangolin is a survivor too. Its staple diet is termites and ants, and there are always those about. It's not interested in the corsa on her single egg. To these dwellers of the plains, the drought is an inconvenience rather than a disaster. For week after week, there's not a cloud in the sky. The only water holes that animals like kudu and zebra can rely on are those that are fed by underground springs from Itosha's limestone base. 
zebra pour among the stones to reach the remaining water. The elephants are worse off than most. They need up to 40 gallons of water a day. They like to drink pure, clear water, but when they're desperate, they'll filter the mud to find it. Open water is essential to the blue crane's way of life. A muddy puddle is a very poor substitute. This then is a brief portrait of Itosha, reduced to dust and mud as a result of two almost waterless years. Apart from the few well-adapted animals, life was almost at a standstill. And then came the first hint of a break in the drought. One or two fluffy clouds began to pile up. This went on for weeks until, at last, a few raindrops, no more than scattered showers, fell. It was a promise more than a fulfillment but it was the signal that some of the small mammals had been waiting for. Out on the now faintly greening plains, two bat-eared foxes produced a litter of cubs. When they were a couple of weeks old, their mother decided to move them to a new den. The brief break in the drought brought opportunities for others like the pied crow. A lagging cub represents a potential meal for a crow. Its mother has no idea that her offspring is in dire trouble. Apart from being slightly lame in one leg, the cub has escaped serious injury and won its first big battle in life. After that first promise of relief, the clouds tantalized by building up but never breaking where the rain was most needed. Then, after weeks of teasing, the long-awaited storms came. What had looked like this was unbelievably transformed to this in a few weeks.
It's an often forgotten miracle that seeds lie even in deserts, waiting like sleeping princesses for the kiss of rain. Itosha awoke almost overnight. Flowers are only a seven-day wonder, withering in the hot sun almost as quickly as they blossom. What matters to the grazing and browsing animals is the vast harvest of food that has sprung up among the flowers. For springbok, wildebeest and zebra, life has begun once again. For the birds too. The crown plover is quick to take advantage of generous cover and plentiful food to rear her chicks. The rains bring grass seeds for the ground squirrels. The flush of new grass has triggered the male springbok into rutting duels. Life is bursting out all over Etosha. Some of the most dramatic events are rarely seen. Waterholes are a natural setting for wildlife dramas at any time. Many are not as obvious as a lion kill. Hidden from most eyes are the miracles of reborn insect life. The stick grasshopper matches exactly the grass on which it rests and is easily overlooked. The stick insect's camouflage is equally impressive. It even sways as if moved by a light breeze. When it's threatened, it tries to frighten possible enemies by opening its wings. Only when the danger has passed does it close them again. There are almost as many species of praying mantis as there are different kinds of grass around the water's edge. Each species is adapted to look like the leaf or blade on which it chooses to sit, waiting for prey. Fortunately for this hungry grasshopper, it's out of reach or too big for the mantis to tackle.
In the mopani trees which grow round the waterhole, a mopani emperor moth caterpillar feasts relatively free from competition. Browsing mammals find the tree's leaves unpalatable. The period following the rains is a time for hatching. butterflies of many species flutter down like multi-coloured confetti on a moist patch beside the waterhole. In the fresh green miniature forest, a hunter swivels its eyes in search of any victim within range of its projectile tongue. The chameleon's eyes operate independently, a great advantage when looking out for danger or spotting a potential meal. The bullfrogs have spent the two dry years buried in the mud. Now they've emerged and the pressure is on to breed. In the burning sun, the water can disappear almost as quickly as it came. So they must mate, spawn and the tadpoles hatch, all in the space of days rather than weeks. The tadpoles are highly vulnerable. The shallows in which they swim can quickly evaporate leaving them high and dry long before they can become little frogs. But enough usually make it. Bullfrogs, young and old, are not put off by the size of their prey. Later in life, this youngster will tackle lizards and even small snakes. Few amphibians can match a growing bullfrog for sheer appetite. The heavy rains have brought an unusual visitor to Etosha, a fish eagle. There are no rivers in Etosha and very few fish. But perhaps the four inches of rain that fell in 11 days fooled the eagle. A resident young hawk eagle is also on the lookout for prey. There are no fish in the waterholes, 
But there are plenty of terrapins, and the eagle must find food somehow. A terrapin's shell gives protection from most enemies, but not from a fish eagle's hooked beak. After two years of relentless drought, the eventual coming of the rains triggered some extremely rare wildlife dramas. The phenomenon of millions of red-billed quilia nesting after the rains is often witnessed. But what happened when these quilia and their inexperienced young visited a newly filled waterhole in Etosha is something few people have ever seen. Marabou storks are opportunists. Some of them learn to catch small birds like quilia. But this attack on the quilia flocks came from many directions. First, the tawny eagles are lying in wait. Inevitably, in such a mass of birds, some fall or get panicked into the water as they drink or bathe. The next form of attack came from below the surface, by terrapin. A tawny eagle sees a chance to steal a quilia already grabbed by a terrapin. Attack by water, air, and now, finally, by land. A black-backed jackal joins the hunt. The last rains fell barely a month ago. Already, the country around the waterhole is looking parched and brown. It won't rain again for at least six months, if then. But the animals of Itosha are used to that. What they certainly couldn't survive in the near future is another two years waiting for the rains to come.